Now we turn to Carlene Cullen, founder and executive director of Cool the Earth. She also initiated Ride and Drive Clean, a collaborative campaign to rapidly accelerate the switch to zero emission vehicles. Carlene is based in Marin County. Carlene Cullen, thank you for joining me on this conversation on In-Depth. Happy to be here. So first off, let's start uh, with your organization, Cool the Earth. Tell me a little bit about what that organization does and how electric vehicles plays into its message statement. Sure. Uh, I started Cool the Earth, a nonprofit organization, about 17 years ago, and our mission is to reduce carbon emissions through uh, personal action. So we started working in schools with young kids, teaching them about climate change and giving them tools to go home and get their whole family starting to work um, on energy efficiency and reducing their carbon footprint. And then in uh, 2014, as electric vehicles started to make it on the market, um, we turned much of our attention towards that since it's the uh, largest source of carbon emissions in California and and in the nation. Um, So we started working on that. And about five years ago, we started uh, the Bay Area's largest collaboration called Ride and Drive Clean. We have 150 partner cities and agencies and nonprofits who uh, all work together to promote the use of electric vehicles. So you, you've you been in this work for quite a long time now, and I, I imagine you've seen things change both in a, in a tangible way and just in a mindset way when it when we're talking about the conversation of electric vehicles in the Bay Area. Yes, absolutely. Uh, both mindset, as you said, and also in uh, practical terms of what's happening with EV adoption. Um, I did want to mention that when Governor Newsom was had his gu- gubernatorial campaign, I was his policy advisor for how we electrify transportation in California, specifically focusing on passenger vehicles. And my primary advice was to um, ban the new sale of gas cars in 2035. So uh, really happy the governor's made that commitment and is backing it up with lots of resources to make sure that um, we have the grid capacity and the EV charging capacity. You know, and and you mentioned there, you know, obviously 2035, it's, it's going to be here sooner than I think anyone really thinks as time flies. But One of the aspects of conversation here when we are talking about uh, electric vehicles and and their prominence is the surrounding infrastructure to set up the support for EVs. And right now, you know, a lot of talk is centered around charging stations and their durability and accessibility um, and getting the industry to take that more seriously. That's work that you've been very involved in recently. Yes. Um, So we, as I mentioned, we've been uh, educating drivers about going electric. And about three years ago, there uh, came into our view the issue of a reliable charging experience. And we started working on this uh, with some of the government agencies, California Energy Commission and the California Air Resources Board here in California, And then also at the federal level, as the Biden administration is rolling out its seven and a half billion dollars for charging infrastructure. And along the way, we came across so many unreliable stations that we decided to really start advocating for drivers and making sure that the industry stepped up to make sure their stations are functioning to driver expectations, which is Basically, first time, every time you need to be able to plug in, charge and go on with your trip and not have any any issues at all. Well, in the the work that you've done, and obviously you're engaged in a lot of communication with a lot of people on this, um, you know, why are there issues with charging stations to begin with? Like, what what's the cause of this? And I mean, was it just the fact that maybe the manufacturers weren't prepared for the durability that they needed to have. What are the hurdles here? So there, in the end, there are two primary hurdles. One is that the technology was really new. So, uh, you know, eight years ago, 10 years ago, there really weren't many charging stations other than Tesla's and their proprietary connections. And so the industry came in, new technology, 
And many of those stations are going to be replaced now from uh, funds for California, as well as the White House. Um, we're going to see a significant improvement in the charging infrastructure that had been in place. It was, was kind of legacy equipment. And frankly, there wasn't enough attention paid to maintenance. And now the companies are going to need to pay attention. There's new regulations in uh, contracts from the California Energy Commission and California Resources Board uh, are both implementing 97% uh, uptime. And it's something that is live and happening right now is that the California Air Resources Board is um, in the final stage of oversight with Electrify America, which Mary, if you remember, that's a settlement from Dieselgate in which VW was compelled to spend about $2 billion nationwide uh, and 800 million in California to install charging stations. And um, they're working with California Research Bird right now to talk about what the uptime requirements are for new stations as well as existing stations. And as advocates, we want to make sure that new, new and existing stations both have a 97% uptime requirement. How confident are you feeling uh, about, about all of this, you know, uh, getting to that point? Well, I'm very confident in the new stations. There's um, in the field, there's lots of reports and I've experienced it myself that the stations are working really well and that um, we're going to move forward with a great consumer experience with the existing stations. Uh, I'm waiting to see. We're definitely out there um, providing a lot of information to agencies and government to really push the point that even existing stations need to be brought up to speed. And they can, it's not rocket science. Uh, it's something that needs just more, more attention paid to maintenance. I, I believe that uh, current EV owners and those prospective buyers, uh, knowing that stations work, whether it's older or newer, is gonna be uh, of uh, utmost interest to them. Um, Another, you know, I think another aspect of this, and this is something uh, I've had in earlier conversation, is that when we're talking about California and the Bay Area, we know it's prolific for having a lot of electric vehicles on the road, but it does seem that those in a slightly higher income bracket or in certain areas are able to have better accessibility to these vehicles and, and to what it takes to keep them going. Um, you know, how, from, from your perspective, how do we shore up these disparities between those who can get the cars and, and keep them and those it, where it still seems far away? Yeah. So there's two aspects to that, that I could address. Um, first of all, for people in our priority communities, there's the first issue of how can I afford this vehicle? And there are state programs. Uh, one is called Clean Cars for All, that if you have an older car, I think it's about 17 or 18 years old, you can turn that in and get up to $20,000 towards a new vehicle. So that is making a huge difference. It's a really popular program and it's run here by the Bay Area Air Quality Management District. So we're really excited about that. And then the second thing is that there needs to be more charging stations. And that's where I think it's a really rosy picture. The state is investing billions of dollars Tesla is starting to open up their charging stations. Uh, PG&E has a new program that uh, will fully fund charging stations at multifamily properties, as well as there's other um, programs that are installing stations for people who live in multifamily. And there's a really strong emphasis on our, our low income and disadvantaged communities. Those are really the folks that we need to put our emphasis and our efforts behind. And this is happening. It's absolutely happening. Well, you know, what do you think will help to keep pushing EVs forward, not just here in California? And, and obviously with 2035 and the, the you know, prohibiting of uh, new gas powered vehicles being sold, but across the country, because, you know, we were talking a little bit about infrastructure here and about the income side of all this. But, you know, do you feel that there's still a ways to go 
when it comes to having more people see this as imperative to dealing with the the larger climate issues? Yeah, so in California, we really are on on a road that will will end up that we can meet our our goals. The rest of the nation definitely is following behind and uh, is really not there yet. And part of the new infrastructure funding um, from the White House is going to really advance that access to the infrastructure. But there are other things that also need to move forward in the industry, including things as basic as permitting for these stations and connecting to the grid. So there are delays there and those sort of systematic things need to be addressed um, to help people. But fundamentally, there needs to be more vehicles at a lower price and the auto manufacturers need to continue to hear that from early adopters and as we move forward, really working in the middle market um, to make sure that we continue to have vehicles that are affordable for everybody. Um, One thing I also want to mention is that the used market is growing significantly and many people now lease their vehicles and have been leasing their vehicles. So there's uh, a very high number of vehicles that are coming in used and there are federal and oftentimes state incentives to buying used. So there's uh, the vehicles are becoming much more affordable and and much more accessible. Well, it, it could be said that some of the thoughts and opinions about electric vehicles, you know, that might be dimming somewhat because we have been seeing recently that that sales have been ticking down. Um, what what are you seeing and hearing in that in that department? So with the rates in California and um, in pg a territory specifically, the rates are increasing, which makes the uh, the cost of driving electric a little bit more expensive. But I want to point out that it's still about 50% of the price that we pay for gasoline. And there's no carbon emissions and there's no air pollution. So still a great economic value. And I think in general that people need to understand that The technology is here, it's advancing, and one of the main issues is really about the EV adoption has really gone through the roof, it's skyrocketed, and now the amount of charging infrastructure needs to catch up, and that's where I'm the most optimistic, is that we have federal funding, we have Tesla opening up, we have the seven automakers committed to 30,000 stations, and California just hit uh, installing its 100,000th public charging stations. So the infrastructure is there and it's really growing rapidly. And I think that's going to be the major factor that really brings people into the fold, whether they're in apartments or condos or traveling. Um, that's going to make a huge difference. And I think all the prognosticators that are looking that EV sales aren't growing fast enough, they're going to be in for a really big surprise coming in 2025. You can find this episode and past episodes of In-Depth online at kcbsradio.com. You can hear In-Depth episodes on the Odyssey app. Download the app on your smartphone and favorite KCBS radio. Thanks for listening for KCBS and In-Depth. I'm Mary Hughes.